Welcome to the Terminal Value Podcast. We have Paul Keel Shaw with us today. And what we're going to be talking about is how you can increase the ROI of your content right away. Uh, and this is actually a little unique because uh, you know most people have heard about content marketing, how you know in order to generate thought leadership, you have to get content out there. Uh, but almost every thought leadership strategy I've seen has a long-term focus, you know, long-term not measured in days or weeks, but months to years to decades. Uh, and so uh, so I have a ulterior motive here because I would I am looking to extract as many ideas as I can from Paul Keel on how to increase the ROI of my content. Uh, so Paul Keel, inter- uh, introduce yourself. Don't let me talk too much. Uh, sounds great. Thank you so much for having me on the show. My name is uh, Paul Keel and I'm the CEO of uh, Outranking.io. Uh, we are an AI assisted uh, search engine optimization platform um, yep. that uh, that caters to small and medium enterprises and also uh, uh, also the writers aspect of it. Uh, and I bring tremendous amount of uh, experience in uh, generating uh, ROI from your from content, uh, whether it lives on a small or small site or that it lives on a very huge enterprise site uh, and uh, quickly increasing the amount of either leads or revenue that you can pull out yep. from your existing content. So that's what my specialty is at. And uh, so, you know, one of the things, you know, one of the you know, things that naturally I have to ask is, you know, in in your uh, in your experience, because you've obviously worked with a lot of people in this domain, uh, what is the what what is the most effective strategy or strategies for monetizing content? Because you know, in my in, at least in my simple mind, uh, well, you know, and or at least you know, in my mind, right, the the way that it worked in the quote old days was that what you would do is you would write enormous blog posts that would rank for keywords. You get people onto your site and then you display banner ads or pop-ups and you'd make, you know, you'd have some kind of cost per thousand impression or cost per mile uh, in traditional terms. I think, you know, uh, recently a number of companies have got, have, uh, popularized the idea of putting together sales funnels, which is where basically instead of focusing on trying to sell ad revenue, what you do is you focus on trying to get a lead capture. And then you you work those leads up a value ladder where you start with something free or very low cost and then move them up to a one-time offer to something that's higher cost. And then over time, as they get to know you, you can ascend them to a higher, uh, you know, a higher average revenue. And then that average revenue offsets your ad spend to acquire them in the first place. Place. And if you get the economics right, you can grow a list really fast. Now, right. that's that all sounds great. Uh, like everything, it is a thousand times harder to do in reality than it is to withdraw on a whiteboard. Um, is that you know? Is, is that what you uh, what you focus on, or what you mostly work on, or is there so, uh, is there something that is there a different strategy that I'm missing? There's a different strategy, right? So okay. we're not talking about monetizing the blog. Uh, in order for you to monetize in any way, whether that's you're selling ads or whether you're selling a product and you want people to be aware about your product, um, what you essentially need to be doing is getting your content discovered, right? If nobody is discovering your content, it's yeah. just worthless. So what we focus on is, uh, hey, you're writing great content, uh, but it's uh, a deadbeat. It's uh, probably living on second, third, fourth page of Google, which is considered yeah. graveyard. Nobody's looking at your content. So that means you're not getting any leads. You're not getting any ad revenues or what, whatever that your goal is you're after, right? Yeah. You build out those funnels once a user lands on your content. Uh, and there are many ways to optimize that particular funnel and having to either click them more or get them deeper into your product and sell some other, some other things, right? You can do all of that, but once they're on your page uh, and what often is missed out with many of this large scale websites or even medium scale websites which just ranking for like thousand keywords is that they tend to create lots of content and it even starts performing a little bit in Google, but rarely anyone has the time or the abilities to go back and optimize what's written so you can improve ranking. So the, the goal is not to live in that seventh or eighth position on Google, right? Like, yeah, right? like uh, you'd get sure 1%, uh, less than 1% click through rate, uh, I mean, a uh, uh, percentage of traffic that's overall coming to your page. But what if you can get in that top five and increase that 1% to 16% to 8%, right? Like, that's the kind of ROI you want to generate. Uh, yeah. And uh, those, there are some really quick things that people can do in order to get this going really fast and get tremendous amount of traffic coming to their website. But optimization is the least looked opportunity when it is actually the largest. Well, uh, uh, 
if you, if you don't mind, kind of uh, share a few of those nuggets of wisdom, uh, because and uh, there's uh, another thought that I kind of, that I want to bring up in a little bit, which is that. Uh, well, so I'll, I'll give a little bit of a preview of coming attractions. So uh, a, a lot of the SEO uh, things that I've, re- that I've read are generally speaking targeted broad market because your know, SEO for the most part is a broad market targeted type of thing. But what I've seen very few people focus on is uh, if you have, say, like a niche B2B uh, type of business, right? You know, broad SEO, you know, so like, for example, you know, you know uh, Oh, so you know, let, let's talk about one of the businesses that I'm involved in, right? You know, in in helping people source IT headcount. You know, if you're trying, you know, if you're trying to either bring on IT contractors, IT heads, um, you know, people, you know, I am looking to connect specifically with people who are looking to do those uh, do those types of activities. In you know, in addition to other things that I work on, uh, and so you know, in my case, right, broad traffic isn't necessarily what I'm looking for. I'm looking to isolate those specific people. And so what I'm really interested to find out is whether there is a, you know, kind of a splinter strategy or a piece of the SEO strategy that can help in that domain, because almost everything I've seen is broad market business to consumer targeted, which is fine if you're a business to consumer company, but if you're a niche B2B, then uh, I think there could potentially be a blue ocean here because of course, most B2B companies, you know, they just ignore SEO altogether because they figure, okay, well, it's not really gonna help me. I'm gonna be doing a lot of optimization for people who aren't my clients. Uh, true that, right? So specifically when talking about the domain that you mentioned, uh, IT, uh, outsourcing, uh, yeah. like engineers outsourcing, right? Like developers outsourcing. Um, like if you were targeting the right keywords, uh, you would find that B2B persona. Uh, okay. You need to be going after what their pain points might be and then create content around that, right? So uh, what often happens is that, uh, let me give you an example of something totally different, but you're writing about uh, the best places to visit in Africa, for example. Yeah. But what you really want to be doing is optimizing for best uh, centuries or best uh, wild parks uh, to visit in Africa, right? Like, so uh, that's the major disconnect, right? Like you're writing for something and you're probably ranking for it, but it's not valuable because you're selling something else, right? So what I suggest, and uh, a platform can also help do that, but... um, you can start with a broad idea and then drill down into something specific related to your service and only create content around that. No matter how low the volume is, don't don't go after the keyword volume, go after the value that it can give your business, right? So even if you get one qualified lead out of it, that's yeah. great because you have 12 leads and that will still do much better than having no leads with 700 in traffic, right? So you want to be going after things which are specific and aligned with your business interest and uh, just keep working towards excellence and content around that focus area. Yeah. And eventually you'll build up as much authority to start ranking. And then once you start ranking, you need to start focus on optimizing it so you can start ranking even better uh, and just outbeating some of your competition. All right. Well, so, okay. So now we can get back to the original question before I took us off track. Uh, when we're talking about optimizing to rank better, what are some of the things that you could, that people can do in order to do that? You know, and of course I think the, um, the back end hook that we're going through right here is that, uh, I'm certain it's uh, rather complicated for people to do on their own, which is why they work with the agencies such as yours. But, uh, <laughs> but anyway, go ahead and share some of the strategies with us. So, uh, the biggest strategies for on-page SEO optimization is, uh, like you're, when you're optimizing content. So, Let's say you're already ranking, right? So what I what we look for is in larger websites, we'll look for opportunities that we can quickly optimize with less little time as possible without changing the content, but just you know, changing a few things here and there that could lead to that quick win. Uh, and what we often look for is those low-hanging fruits. And those low-hanging fruits can have many information that you can need, probably need to optimize. Uh, and th- there needs to be some sort of software involved. Otherwise, you'll be doing all of this manual work. Yeah. But um, what you do is you analyze your content against the competitor, the competitors who are ranking for the same objective that you have. Um, and you find out the difference between them and start addressing those differences uh, in the way that uh, the product or the analysis would suggest. You start including some keywords, uh, some adjustments and some meaning changes and stuff like that, right? Like just including things that users are actually looking for. 
And once you have that optimized, you will see improvement in your ranking. If if you're already at 20th page, you'll start moving up. And that's the yeah. goal, right? To, to keep moving up. And to the only way to do that is aligning your content with the interest of the audience. And to do that, you need to take a data-driven approach is analyzing your competition, which is called SERP analysis. And then you gather the intel from it and take that information and just quickly tweak your content. So uh, that's, the, that's the primary way that anybody would uh, want to optimize their content. And I've seen like notions that people say, hey, AI can go and do that. <laughs> now, if you want AI to go and write all of those things and optimize it for you, you probably can hope to lose all your ranking. So uh, that's not gonna happen. A ma a manually, someone is gonna go and change those headings and change those uh, meta descriptions or titles or headline based on the recommendation this analysis is suggesting, right? Okay. And uh, what you focus on is things that you can quickly just adjust, quickly adjust. So the quickest thing to adjust is add probably a keyword or take away a keyword from title. Uh, then title is the most important on page SEO element, just like goes without the doubt. And, and kid you not, uh, there's like, major amount of people who do not rank is because they do not optimize their title for the right keywords. That means that single most important thing is misaligned with the user intent. That's um, actually really so, interesting to hear because I would think that with some of the Google algorithm updates that, uh, you know, that, that the, you know, that, that headline keyword, uh, I don't know if I'd say keyword stuffing, but headline keyword optimization would have been worked out uh, or, or kind of diminished by now, because I think that <laughs> seems like a fairly simple strategy. And Google's made it pretty darn hard to, uh, to, to rank with simple strategies. No, it's not simple. So that's not the only ranking factor. You cannot just throw a headline and with yeah. very with the content that has zero depth to it uh, and hoping it to rank, right? Like that's not going to happen. So you need the right like mix of all the information. And that's why you need an indicator that shows you all of this information that you need. But uh, coming back to your point, title optimization still works. No matter how 2010 it sounds like, it does work because... Think about any search algorithm, like whether you're searching on site, whether you're searching on Stack Overflow, whether you're searching on Quora, every search algorithm that you type your query in is going to start looking for the first thing, which is exact search. And then it's if it does not find exact search, it'll start looking for other things. Sure, Google made it a little interesting with adding a few more, uh, yeah. a few, a few more pointers to it. But again, that is a ranking factor. Uh, and optimizing your titles the right way can significantly lead to improved ranking. I'm not saying significant improvement in CTR, but improvement in ranking. And then you can work from there to improve other things as well. well um, and, okay. So for, for the people who aren't familiar with some of the, uh, the industry lingo, uh, CTR, uh, what does that acronym mean? Click-through rate, right? So okay. uh, people are looking at your content, but are not clicking it. That's second problem to have, right? So even if you are on the second place of Google and nobody's clicking on your content, that, that could be something else. So there are other things that you can do to really increase the ROI from your existing content. You already spend hours and hours creating this amazing content. I just need to do a little more to have it discovered. And I think this is where you need to start with a content optimization tool that can do the analysis for you and help you come up with the list of suggestions that you can quickly execute and start seeing improvements in ranking today, not tomorrow, not after a month, today, right? Like some yeah. easy things that you can improve. So uh, this will definitely make a big, big, big difference uh, in how your website performs in terms of getting leads and revenue. Okay, excellent. Excellent. Well, that sounds uh, that sounds great. Well, uh, let's see. So uh, can you tell us a little, I mean, now is, uh, is one of those uh, optimizer tools your product or is that, um, you know, or are there multiple products that are out there uh, who can help? There you? are a few <laughs> products out there. Some are basic, some are more advanced. Ours, ours is a little more advanced, but with a little more guided assistance uh, uh -huh. for people who have absolutely no idea to all the idea about SEO and content altogether. So we do a little more help hand holding and we help you analyze the top pages that you can go after, not the ranking ones, but the one that you can go after to quickly improve and see increase in ROI. We want you to make or to get more traffic, more revenue, more leads yeah. right now, not after five days, not after 10 days, right? Sure, content is long-term goal. And in the long term, this content will like uh, probably even give you higher ROI, but it's something that you can do right now uh, to improve gotcha. that. And that's what our product helps you do. Uh, simply come in, you put in your website, create a project, and it starts scanning. And 
starts giving you suggestions and then you can take it and use our platform to optimize it really quickly and publish it. So uh, there's tremendous amount of case studies also that we have done on our own content that ranks uh, outranks our competition and hence outranking. Uh, but uh, yeah, so this is the quickest way to go about and pulling in additional revenue and lead sources. Okay, and uh, let's see. And is the is the scope of what you're looking at? Uh, do you only look at, say, like for example, the page text content, which is I think the majority of what uh, you know of what gets indexed? But then there's also like video and audio content, which uh, I mean, rumors are that Google's getting better at uh, you know at figuring out how to uh, you know how to scrape and index uh, those files. But uh, yes, absolutely. You know, so- <laughs> Uh, absolutely, there are other search engines for it, like YouTube is a search engine for it, right? But uh, when transcribing a video, it's it's out of Google's possibility to go and do this on the fly, transcribe all the videos that it can read and stuff like that. Uh, so that's still going to be very limited. It's, uh, I wouldn't say that Google doesn't look at it, uh, but I just don't see any clarity there that they have given yeah. out. Uh, So I'd say text is still the number one consumed matter by any living being uh, on earth. Uh, But what we have noticed is that if you have video format of similar content or some adjacent content that's related to it, and you put it on the same web page when someone is reading through it, it will increase their time on page, uh, which could also increase their engagement on site. And it can trigger some other matrices that can help you uh, be uh, sound better to Google. Got it. Got it. Okay. Well, uh, uh, so uh, tell people where they can find out a little more and then give us one last uh, nugget of wisdom before we, uh, before we call it for the day. Sounds great. So uh, uh, they can find all the information on outranking.io. That is O-U-T-R-A-N-K-I-N-G.io. Uh, and the name is because we help you really outrank your competition and generate uh, more traffic uh, and better content ROI. So uh, check out the website. There's a free trial. You can register, scan your website and, uh, start creating or optimizing your existing uh, web pages. And one true nugget of wisdom from me uh, is that uh, with the rise of AI, don't think that it's gonna take over your writing and optimization process. Humans are gonna need, uh, are always gonna be needed in the process. Uh, AI is only here to assist you in being a better writer on SEO. And tools like our tranking can really accelerate your uh, process and your uh, learning curve towards uh, that achievement. So, uh, I think that's that 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 that's really good, and I I completely agree that um that yeah I. I don't think it is realistic that AI is going to completely replace humans in, uh, you know, in all domains. You know, I'm, I'm sure there are some there are some areas of repetitive uh, repetitive tasks where uh, AI can absolutely step in. But otherwise, yeah, I think I think of it as more an augmentation than a than a replacement. It's absolutely is. But the reason why I give this wisdom is because uh, there is a rise of AI content writing bots uh, all over the place, and people think that hey, I'm gonna click one button, it's gonna understand everything that I want and it's gonna create that blog post that's gonna rank tomorrow, right? Like all of these unrealistic expectations uh, around content are being generated by so many companies that are trying to sell uh, this kind of spun content. Uh, and it's it's not gonna work. Uh, it's not gonna work. It hasn't worked before. It's not gonna work in future. Uh, human eyes, human value and addition Uh, additional value to what's out there is always important to search ranking. Otherwise you're just doing what everyone else is doing. Yeah, no, totally get it. Totally get it. Well, and, and I'm, I'm, I'm on board with that too, just because uh, the thing that I keep thinking about, right. You know, is that, you know, as, as time's gone on, everybody's trying to figure out some way to either scam or hack the algorithms, depending (laughs) on your perspective. I mean, you know, and and ultimately I think the, the, the thing is, you know, what it, what it really all comes back to is, some you know, is figuring out ways of getting traffic so that you can convert somebody from you know who were you you know you know who are you to okay I think I know you to okay I think I'd like to connect with you and then once that happens then you know that that's where your funnels go in and, you know but it's getting Absolutely. somebody from they have no clue who you are to they figure your probably credible enough to where they'll at least let you set, let them, let you send them some emails before they decide whether or not you're, whether you're full of it or not. Um, <laughs> exactly. And, right. And, and I think, and that's the thing is spun content doesn't help with that process at all. It might help get someone on the page, but if you get someone on the page and they see spun content that doesn't make any sense, you're not going to convert them. <laughs> right. Exactly. And they're going to bounce and 
that's going to signal other things and which is going to lead to dropping in ranking across your sites too, right? So Google hates this kind of uh, uh, too good to be true sites uh, that have so much content overnight and stuff like that. So just try to avoid that altogether. Uh, yeah, it's just, uh, I've, yeah, this is like, uh, again and again, like this industry is uh, growing so fast, AI and content. Yeah. Uh, and there's all sorts of hacks that uh, people have uh, produced <laughs> that just is not the right thing for your business, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah. No, outstanding. All right. Well, hey, I really appreciate your time today. And again, that's outrankingio uh, That's O-U-T-R-A-N-K-I-N-G.io. All right. Thank well, you so hey, much. Uh, uh, Let's, uh, let's definitely uh, definitely do this again sometime, and I uh, hope everybody has a wonderful day. Thank you for listening to the Terminal Value Podcast. Please feel free to visit me online at www.terminalvalue.biz, where you can subscribe, find me on social, and then we can connect and just keep the conversation going. I'm really looking forward to hearing from you, and I hope you have a wonderful day. All rights reserved. No part of this broadcast may be produced in any form by any means without written permission from Business of Light, LLC. All trademarks and brands referred to herein are the property of their respective owners.